Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today I want to talk about INFJs and nerves and I think I'm in a good position to talk about this today. Look around you, look at our house, it's just boxes and bags and boxes and bags and boxes and more bags. Look at this, what the hell is this? What's happened to our house? What's going on? Is this why I'm not making videos anymore? You bet it is. <laughs> I will be back, I will be making videos. I will be making a lot more videos, but as of right now, this is the situation. We're moving and this has to be ready by today. So this is the final day before we go on one week's vacation in Edinburgh. And then when we come back, it's moving day. And yeah, it's crazy right now. I'm dying, stressed to the max, nerves in the top. Basically, I had to get rid of so much furniture. I had made up arrangements with second hand shops to pick it up. They didn't want anything. <laughs> so basically we just gave it away for free. We just uh, basically uh, gave it to everyone who needed it. I've been running a delivery service day, <laughs> all day, basically picking things up and then putting them, <laughs> giving things away, managing people. I had like 20 people come here today to pick things up yesterday, sorry. And, oh God, it's just so many things that can go wrong in these situations. And I want to talk to you all about an invisible problem. An invisible problem that so many INJ types deal with. And that problem is nerves. Really, INJs have, um, and may often mention having issues with like this chronic nervousness. Like I feel a lot of them mention that they're constantly fighting off nerves, dealing with nerves trying to make sure that uh, they don't let the nerves get the better of them. I think INJs are equipped with one of the most strong and sensitive nerves of all types. And here it's like how you respond to immediate demanding attention. I had an INFJ colleague at work and uh, she would jump whenever I called her name because that's her startle response. She had a very strong startle response. Uh, and I've seen other people struggling with that too. I uh, Personally, I have some issues with that. Like when people call my name, I, I tend to jump a little. Like I don't think other people note this, but I jump a little. It's actually something that can make me a little uh, on edge in a sense. If I'm always called everywhere, if I always have to be on, if I always have to be an SP, that's the problem here. The SP engine in an INFJ is like this, like uh, it's not running most of the time and then as soon as something happens it's like Ugh. <laughs> and it's like a shock in a sense as it starts like you kickstart an engine and that's how it usually is it can feel a little like you're on a rocket ship if you overuse this as a lot as an INFJ or an INTJ and here as, as something I've noticed is that some INFJs and sometimes INTJs have this uh, association with cowardice it's not really true it's a stereotype but it's like an idea that sometimes gets attached to this uh, because of this startle response uh, the association is so they're more fearful or they're less secure or they're less stable or they're less like calm um, or they're more on edge and they're a little <laughs> nervous all the time and that can look a little like uh, you're a coward. I see a lot of, uh, especially the ones that struggle the most with their SP engine, uh, have this issue. And some of them can be, but I think personally I've worked hard to challenge my nerves and uh, to put myself in situations and to manage them. And I've developed a lot of techniques to how to handle it. I've had to, but I seriously started from scratch and never really had it easy. Like... Uh, uh, I would sit, uh, basically I would retreat to a bathroom and sit there for five hours while I prefer prepared for a big speech for the public in politics. Like, I had so many issues with all that and I would feel so burnt out afterwards and it would feel like I fried myself up, like, carrying all of that and putting myself in those situations. It was extremely difficult, to be honest. And uh, going on stage, like, when I was there, I feel like my nerves really went for the better. I, they took a leap for the better. Uh, suddenly it became like this fire when I was on stage but before then and after I was like shaking literally and um, I felt often that the INFJs 90 days that don't notice this the INFJs 90 days that go no I don't have any problems with nerves you all do this one thing that's really interesting um, I think some of you avoid situations that 
could be really good for you, that could really help you grow. Uh, and I've noticed that I've done this myself, it's a few times in my life. I've noticed that sometimes I have avoided relationships and uh, like bigger issues and I've thought of reasons why it wouldn't work and I like put myself in a situation where I rationalized away my nerves and uh, did what I was the most afraid of and I wouldn't even realize that I was doing this. I would mostly just uh, rationalize the worst decision or the decision to do nothing. <laughs> I would find a reason to do nothing or find a reason to pick the easy way. And I've seen other INFJs do this as well. Find a reason to believe that everything is the worst thing you imagined and uh, then not do it, basically. But really there are better strategies. What strategies can you use? Uh, mainly it's getting to know your NJ. It's getting to know your intuition and your judging, the proactive intuition in yourself. And it's using it. It's developing concentration. It's developing focus. It's developing mental discipline and mental clarity. And basically the ability to discipline your mind, discipline your body, discipline your thoughts, to focus your mind, to hone in and to kind of organize and create this environment, this mental landscape where everything is in your control, where everything is in your hands, where you have full immersiveness. So basically what you're looking for is the full immersiveness of intuition like when you truly get into a thought or an idea and it becomes everything you are and everything you see when you basically become an idea that's what helps you get away from it basically just going over an idea over and over until it basically you're in it basically you're in this uh, idea world and uh, from there on you can let you can do so much you can do and achieve so much through this process uh, basically you can engage in like this visionary state like if it's at its peak it's like a visionary state you're just executing a vision something you've seen in your head something you want to do and everything is accounted for in this vision everything is in your head you have full mental discipline full clarity and in that nerves really can't touch you you have built up this resistance to nerves you have built up this kind of answer to the nerves you built up this idea world where you can manage all these interruptions and make sure that they don't happen. But there are other things as well and it's uh, also noticing that acting on nerves does not reduce nerves. Sometimes we think that if we act on nerves and respond to the issues that bring them up, we can reduce them. This is short-term thinking. It's you basically us being on edge and doing things and making sure you respond to things immediately to get them away from you so that you can enter into focus afterwards. No, typically it's better to stop, get into flow again, and then do what it needs, what needs to be done. Like instead of getting into an SP state and uh, basically blocking your energy off and doing things and running around restless and responding to things as they happen. Basically find that mental discipline and fortitude first and then do things. That's better, generally. It's more long-term and it really is the case that you can get into this SP trap where you kind of keep on doing things and new things keep on happening and you're constantly responding to things and hoping for a time where you can let go and let that. And this is a trap because there is always something immediate, always something that wants your attention. There will always be something you should do, something to grab onto, something to manage, something around you that needs your attention. And if you go through this from SP, you're taking kind of the back door every time, like you have the straight door to NJ, but you choose to constantly walk around to SP and then through the NJ door. And that's the wrong way to move for you. It's uh, really, it's... <laughs> Uh, it costs a lot more energy and it costs a lot more stress. So what you're lo really looking for as an INFJ, and this is all crucial to growth, even in INTJs as well, is learning to develop a sense of vision and letting that vision, letting that idea, letting that mental discipline give you courage to do things that you normally wouldn't do if you were in the SP state and let SP grips take you over. For an, I, for an ESFP, for an ESTP, SP gives courage, but for an INFJ, for an INTJ, it gives nervousness, like this sense that I need to constantly be on my feet, I need to be restless, I need to do something, and it just brings stress. So it's different, it's completely different for both types. What gives you flow, what doesn't give you flow. Now... I think uh, you're probably already doing good, you're probably already learning this. And uh, I think you can recall times 
when uh, stress and nerves wanted to get the better of you, when you wanted to go out of a situation and you learned and you didn't. And you saw it through and you figured it out and you managed to regain that discipline. You calmed yourself down, you got back into flow and you went there and did it. Uh, and that's the ideal, that's what you're striving towards 